Have you ever imagined what your surroundings looked like about 200 years ago? Well, if you live in the Great Plains of North America, the scenery would be very much different. You would have enormous herds of bison and many other animals. In fact, millions and millions of bison would roam large areas of North America. One can hardly imagine the immense scenic beauty of this precious animal in huge numbers spread out over a vast prairie area. This so much represented the original pristine America that the bison would have been a more appropriate icon of America than the bald eagle. The First Nation of North America lived in harmony with the bison. The bison was to them a spiritual animal because it provided so many things to them. In duress, the tribe would pray to Mother Earth to awaken the spirits and lead the bison to their camp. When bison were killed, there was a prayer or offering to the spirit of the slain animal. This is no more. Uncontrolled, merciless killing of the bison for sheer pleasure or profit by the early settlers resulted in the near extinction of this precious animal and a total transformation of the pristine scenic wilderness of the bison habitat. Parts of Tanzania, like the Serengeti, so wisely protected as national parks, are perhaps the only place left in the world where you can experience something similar to the original bison prairie areas of the Great Plains of North America. Please join me on a safari in Tanzania in observing the astonishing Serengeti and other places of Tanzania one can just imagine the immense scenic beauty of many millions of bison roaming the spectacular prairie areas of the Great Plains of North America. Hopefully we can restore a large part of the original pristine bison habitat that very much is a quint essential part of American heritage. We will travel to the northern part of Tanzania and visit three national parks. First we will visit Arusha National Park at the foothills of Mount Meru and then Tarangira National Park and finally the prime destination for all safaris in Africa, Serengeti. If you arrive uh, on an international flight in Dar es Salaam, there are several local airlines that can bring you to Arusha, the so-called safari capital of Tanzania. Arriving in Arusha, you will be quite close to Mount Meru and have the option of several excellent lodges in this area, ideal for a one to two day safari in nearby Arusha National Park.
If you drive through the outskirts of Arusha Sunday morning, you will see the cheerful, very elegantly colorful dressed Tanzanians on the way to church.
From an all too short half a day safari in Tarangira National Park, we drove to Ornight in Gibbs Farm, which is nested in a very beautiful, peaceful garden in a coffee plantation on the exterior slopes of the Gorangora Crater. The local people employed by Gibbs Farm were very friendly with a most delightful, happy Tanzanian personality. In driving from Gibbs Farm to Manuera Airstrip, you will likely often see people from the legendary Maasai tribe. The flight to Serengeti crosses the Gorongora Crater, a very popular safari destination with abundant easy to spot wildlife. From the air you'll be amazed by the size of the adjoining Gorongora Conservation Area and Serengeti, combined larger than Belgium or Maryland and roughly the size of Denmark or Holland. Driving from the tiny Lamai airstrip to the safari camp, you will be absolutely amazed by the beauty and sheer size of the pristine savanna all around you. The very remoteness from other camps of the mobile Kimondo Lamai tent camp provided an unforgettable imagination of prehistoric time since you were unlikely to see other safari vehicles or any man-made structures in this pristine remote area of Serengeti. Most tin camps provide very comfortable facilities for their guests. You are all treated in a very VIP fashion, ensuring a most relaxing and enjoyable safari experience. Of course, the most unforgettable experience uh, you get on your safari drives, which start early in the morning, which is the best time to observe wildlife and also the most comfortable temperature wise. From elevated parts of Serengeti, you have a vista of a breathtakingly beautiful landscape in all directions dotted with a variety of wild animals as far as you can see. It is absolutely spectacular and difficult to capture on film or photos. You simply have to be there. The old saying, it is difficult to describe, takes on a whole new meaning when visiting Serengeti. During the day, the big cats mostly sleep in a shady spot and are often difficult to find unless you have a trained eye, which fortunately most safari guides have.
you spot a male and female lion separate from the lion pride, it is often because they are in a mating season which lasts for several days with copulation or attempt to copulate 20 to 40 times a day, often without eating. Not all males are successful and may endure wounds from fights with other males. A large pride of lions can take down the giraffe. Naturally, the giraffes have watchful eyes and are often observing the location of lions, which can be helpful in finding the lions. This male and female lion are in luck and had the fortune of the lion pride bringing a captured wildebeest for food so the couple can continue their business of mating for the benefit of the pride. Beautiful and incredibly fast cheetah is the only cat you are likely to see hunting in the middle of the day. When the cheetah captures a small animal, it will have to eat as much of it quickly. It is not able to protect its food from larger cats or hyenas. About a quarter of a million wildebeest and other animals died during the annual migration through Serengeti from thirst, hunger, exhaustion, diseases and predators. This provides plenty of food for scavengers like the hyenas, vultures, jackals and other animals adding to the great wildlife diversity of Serengeti.
flying into Serengeti, you may observe huge black areas on the ground resulting from controlled burning of the savanna grass. This stimulates the generation of new and more nutritious grass supporting the many millions of grazing wild animals. It also maintains an open savanna where you have an unobstructed view of immense areas of breathtakingly beautiful scenery and wildlife viewing. Although most attention on safaris in Serengeti is on the large animals like the elephants, the giraffe, the cats, the hippos and the rhinos, there is so much else wonderful wildlife for a watchful eye to observe and enjoy in Serengeti. If provoked, the black mamba, one of the most poisonous snakes in the world, can move faster than you can run, whipping its tail while having its head up to four feet off the ground, ready to strike. An insanely frightening sight. Be careful, even in an open vehicle. Its bite is in Tanzania called the kiss of death. You will likely die within 10 to 15 minutes. However, you're not likely to run into a black mamba. Your greater concern should be the rhinos, which are very territorial and dangerous if you invade their space, so keep a safe distance. The scenic Mara River is an ideal place to observe a lot of wildlife. In all its beauty, the Mara River is also a dangerous place for the huge number of wildebeest and other animals that cross the river twice in their yearly migration. Large crocodiles take their toll, but a greater hazard is the probability of broken bones in the very uneven terrain of the river, or being stamped to death in the total chaotic crossing resulting in many corpses of wildebeest at the various crossing points of the river. Approaching the river, the wildebeest may become agitated and run. 
their flock instinct is to be part of a big group, reducing the chances of being grabbed by a crocodile. Paradoxically, this flock instinct adds to the total chaos when a huge herd is crossing the river, often resulting in many casualties. Once past the river, the big herd of wildbees can relax to continue their migration north in the beautiful huge area of Serengeti's savannah stretching well into Kenya.